Hi everybody, this is Heath with Chicago Stockyard Saddle Tree. I'm going to be working on one of my uh, custom saddles here and we're going to be putting a horn on. Now I know some of you are expecting the next video is going to be a, uh, a rough up series uh, for an association building up the, uh, an association style tree. Um, and that is being prepared and it should be coming here pretty soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to be finishing this guy up. And so why not make a couple of videos because a lot of it's going to be uh, redundant or uh, repetition material, um, putting the horn cap on. And that's going to be the same for both trees. And, um, and that's going to be the same in general for most horns, um, other than your metal horns. Those, those have very specific needs because you can't really nail and staple into the tree itself. Um, but besides that, let's get on the horn bits. So here's your horn base or horn gullet or neck, whatever you guys want to call it, all right? But it's the bottom half. Now this is an oversized piece. You probably don't need to have this much, but this will fit anything from four or five inches as far as the cap size goes and a three inch height because that neck becomes a hell of a lot bigger and you need something to cover all of that, all right? And you will skive this down and I've put about an inch marker here and also markers here because you're gonna skive all of that down because as it comes to the back side, you're gonna wanna nail that in and have that well, have it just a little bit more um, flexible, a little bit more malleable, right? So you're not going to be putting too much of a sky on it because you do want that same material or the same thickness all the way around the horn neck. These other bits, your horn filler, you will rough on both sides so that you can glue the grain side down and your grain side's gonna give you a lot of support, so usually you want to do that. And I'm gonna cover that all again, but I'm just going to make a overall um, video at the moment. And this is um, part of our clicker dive. We just do the horn cap and it's got um, wings to it the, for having a horn and horn wrap um, combination if that's what you want but this is only we're going to cut this down to a tab so that tab is going to sit on the back side covering our connecting points from the gullet piece the neck gullet or the neck base and so once those are down and cut then this little flap will cover that right make sense all right so as far as preparation you're going to skive this down actually these have all been dipped right and they have been put through that's three quarters of an inch now optimally you want uh, three eighths of an inch to half inch thick here you don't want any more than that because that's just too much uh, a your needles going through too much it's just too much weight you don't need it but anything less than that you're going as far as a working horn a, you're gonna run into problems a, with the stitching being um, too tight and it'll go through um, those because you need your stitching to be as tight as possible around a, a, a horn. Otherwise, your leather bits are gonna be way too loose as soon as that um, rope comes around and starts dally over and over and over again. And it's just gonna work itself loose. Um, so these get dipped and they have been sitting in a bag for a day so that the, uh, the water has struck through the entire piece. And so it's ready to get worked on right now. All right, so we're gonna skive these guys a little bit thinner. These guys will go a little bit thinner as well. And I will get back to you guys in just a second. All right. So here we are skiving. I, you need a glass to skive on. It's gonna make things a hell of a lot easier. Um, and as you see, I'm just using one of the Osborne skivers. And one of the things about using these skivers, if you're dragging your knuckles, that's about the best place 
where you can find that level. Now this one's been um, a little bit damaged, uh, you know, over the last few years, you know, just a lot of pressure and things like that. But you can move these and tilt them just in case you want to, you know, change the angle of that blade. Anyway, dragging it up, pull one side up. You're going to run into having the, the, the leftovers fall under, fold under the blade. So just be careful of that so that you don't continue to dull the blade. And flicking it, usually I'm able to wipe the blade off when you're skiving like this and you can get in a nice tail going and flick it off. I know some of you guys probably already know this part, but for some of you who don't or need to work a little bit more at skiving a little bit better and getting used to where you're going to be putting your skives, that's just to help those guys out. Anyway, continue to clean your area. Now one of the things is really nice if you've struck the water struck all the way through, you can see the color change. You can actually see the density change it gets to the grain. And you know, approximately, you know where you are in depth as far as skiving everything down. So keep in mind that there's a color change when the density changes in the leather. All right. And once you get to your ends, you want to just slightly bevel that out, skive a little bit more. You don't want a harsh corner here, because underneath your horn, that corner will pop out. So what you're looking for, as far as like the thinness, you don't want it feather thin. You want to be able to see the top grain and a little bit of the bottom side, the interstitial tissue. Um, you know, because if it's feather thin, you're going to have a tendency to rip all the way off. All right, guys? Or rip it completely apart. Actually, can you guys see that? I'm gonna have to double check that. Uh. Get it to focus in here, there we are. All right. So if you guys don't have a skiving machine, what you're looking for is a thickness that's kind of like that. Let's see if we can get this focused up here. All right, that guy's probably mostly done. So scratch this one up if you haven't uh, already. Now what I'm gonna show you guys is mostly A, techniques. So for anything that you have around the house, 
that you can use to build the saddle with. Um, that you don't need all the fancy tools, but those do help. So even just a, a light sanding on these guys, so if you don't have that heavy sander from, like everyone else does have, but um, you'll want to thin that guy down too, all right? Now when you're trying to match weights and thicknesses, it's best to do a crosshatch pattern so you can don't make furrows or troughs. One side deeper than the other side. So you definitely want this nice and flat because whatever you do here will be repeated, right? Whatever you do here will be repeated on the top surface. When I say repeated, it's going to be imprinted. So you want it as smooth as possible. So it's just, it's gonna be like the princess and the pea, where she's sleeping on a pea, with 14 mattresses between her and it, and you're gonna find the same problem. You're gonna be trying to race, chase up a, a bump when you put your top layer on, and it's never gonna go away, because you're gonna be trying to smooth everything out, and then that bump will happen, and you end up mar and everything. All right, so there's your piece. Now it's important to keep this two inch gap um, and this, these uh, tails or these tail cuts coming in from the center. So if you need to make a circle and then cut this out. It's about three eighths of an inch inside the diameter. And then from center, you'll see it's like a pie. And then you'll be able to cut those out. You want this tab. You want to be able to pull the tab through the, the filler when you're, when you're making your cap. All right. This is Heath again with Chicago Stockyard Saddle Tree, and we are doing another step to adding the horn. Um, all right, so at this point, we should be ready to glue up our gullet or neck piece and our filler piece to get ready to be put on here, all right? Now, one of the things you wanna do is Measure this, find the center point, measure this point, find the center point, so that you can have a line, a central line, which we will then use as a guide to help us uh, find center for the horn, um, especially for the tip. Um, now, this becomes more important if you've got Guadalajara horns 
um, rounded or pointed ends that need a specific point so that you can make your stitch from that line um, and also so it doesn't look like it's wonky off to the left or to the right or doing something different. All right. Um, so while this records, I'm going to be doing that. Uh, All right, so that's what it'll look like. All right, at this point, guys, you want the, the heavy part of your gullet or neck part, uh, neck. <laughs> at this point, you want the heavy part to be central to your horn. And so we're going to do a generic centering and bring it up all right and also you want to get this down strap your saddle tree down so it's not moving while you're doing this and give it a little tug Get all the material around. All right. And if you need to, cut your excess off, but don't cut the last two inches or inch and a half just yet, because we're gonna tighten it up with our pliers, okay? So we're gonna bring it. If there's any more give in it, we're gonna tighten it down. There we go. All right. Now you can staple or nail on your backside however you want to do it. These are probably a little long. These are 18 gauge, three quarter inch nails, but half inch or five eighths will work just fine. You want to avoid the top section because we're still going to be cutting and shaping that area. So the top section is right about here. And so you want to avoid that. And three on each side or two on each side is definitely enough for this type of horn covering. All right. And then we can Take it down. Be careful at this point that you don't cut into your finish, your finished fork covering. All right. And if you need to, and if you need to right now, uh, you know, smooth this part up, you might want to add a little bit of water so you don't burnish too much of the leather, change the consistency or the color. Uh, 
as you're putting it on. And that way, it'll just tighten, tighten it up. So now we can start to hit. All right, so if you guys have a leather working hammer, one that has a nice flat and smooth side, or even a ball pane, okay? One that you don't, don't use for anything else other than leather, all right? Uh, you, can, you can use either one at this point. Just make sure that if you have a working hammer, that's, I mean, it's real nice and cheap, that you're not using it for anything else. And when you strike this, you're gonna be pulling in, all right? And it's just a slight pulling in, and you can see that that glue that we've set there is gripping just a little bit onto the hammer. And you can see, if there's a little bit of cellular disruption, don't worry about it, you can tighten everything up. And you're gonna be pulling to the same level of your horn, okay? And you can see it's starting to hug in around the horn cap. And right now, you don't need to be too particular about how that shape is, all right? You can see it's kind of folding down. And when we start to add layers, and then we have our leather pliers or horn pliers, we'll start to square everything up, tighten it up, and line it to where it looks a nice line and, and a, a finish point or the finish level of how our horn is gonna look once we cut the excess off and then stitch it down and edge everything. All right? When you guys are gluing, gluing control is gonna be the thing. Now, usually I have a little piece of wool that I've cut down, which is better than using one of these guys. I find that this, you have less control and it creates more strings, but as it's what I'm working with at the moment, it's okay. Cause some of you are probably not gonna have access to a bunch of wool and you're gonna be using uh, this the glue as it is with the wick stick that it comes with so if you've pulled any of that glue off with the hammer as you were pulling you just fill it in now don't fill too much into the gap because the more that you get in there, the harder it's going to be because you want your stitch to be close enough to the cap, but it may end up being so close to the glue that you have a hard time getting your uh, stitching all and your hook needle through that glue and you don't want to catch it. Now these should set up fairly quickly. Now with this line, you're gonna make the point in the back of the horn and, and the center of the cannel 
the ideal, if you haven't already figured out where that is, mine's right here, okay? So I'm gonna be pointing the center of that line back to the end of the cannel. And you don't want it switched off this way, you don't want it switched off that way, you know, but a nice look forward. You should be able to eyeball this, um, but if you wanna line everything out, go for it. All right, find a center here, and then you can find center all the way back, and you can lay everything out that way. Now, when you're putting your filler on, you want to make sure your grain side is down to the cap. That's going to give you your strength. So, when you're setting this on, whatever the thickness is of the leather you're using, you want that thickness to be the gauge for the step behind the cap you're going to be... Uh, so you, this is going to be set back the thickness or the width that you're using uh, in the leather, all right? All right. So. so just a nice push it on, okay? Then you're going to bring this up, okay, and you're going to look at it, make sure it is what you want, okay. Now, the bumps that you're going <laughs> to, you can smooth this on if you want at this point, okay, make sure it's down, and these guys are picked up, I'm going to, right now, smooth out my bottom half of the neck. I'm just pushing ever so slightly up into that groove, okay, between the leather and the horn piece. Um, and as you can tell, this is a type of uh, teardrop. It's made out of a plexiglass. It's uh, 3 8 thick, and it's a it's slight teardrop, but it's got a bone folder tip. So I've narrowed it up, smoothed it out, and and then smooth it again with uh, a rouge wheel so that it's not abrasive, so that it's not rough on the ends, okay? And I'm just slightly picking the material up as I roll it around. And I'm also slightly smoothing that neck up because of where it comes from, there's a slight cellular disruption. One cell uh, line is going this way and the other cell line is going this way. You'll see that in hides, which is, it's really nice to get your, your flexible pieces from the neck or the armpit areas um, where there is some disruption like that, but you can't have too much, otherwise it doesn't do what you want it to do. All right, so there we are, that should be, set us up pretty good. Now you want to nail in your piece here at this point. Now you want a kind of a starburst pattern. Nine nails should be enough, all right? What you're going to do, and I will draw this out, you want your center nail to be either behind or ahead of the center of your cap, okay? Because just in case you decide to put a concho down in the center of it, um, a, a horn piece or, or something like that, that it's not getting in the way. And then, let's see if you guys can see this. Turn it around just ever so slightly. 
I think you guys can see that as far as the camera's concerned. You'll want one in front, or one in behind, and one in front, and then equidistant from that line, the center line, you'll want four, four other ones. So this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one, and this one, and then one ahead and one behind, one ahead and one behind, however you guys wanna do that, all right? But this should be enough. You don't need to overdo um, nailing this point because if you've got good enough leather sitting there and you're gonna stitch nice and tight, right? You shouldn't need too many nails at this point to make sure that it's not moving. So the front one, I'm gonna tilt ever so much so it goes actually back into the cap, okay? And if you guys are on the edge with these other ones, you'll wanna tip them towards the center. Don't do that. Every once in a while, you may hit steel in these horn caps, okay? And it'll roll your nails. You'll either hit steel or you'll hit carbon fiber. So if you do, you can use the same hole, just redirect your nail. Now, if you're, if you're making something a nice horn, okay, and it's not gonna be covered with a, a metal cap or something like that, what you wanna do is get rid of those bumps that your hammer created, because otherwise you have a princess in the pea scenario where that bump is gonna be exaggerated in the next layer and then the next layer. So you want this as smooth as possible at this point. All right. So we're gonna do a preliminary squeeze. On our horn cap. And we're going to get rid of a little bit of this access. Excess, sorry. But you don't want to get too close. Okay. And a regular straight blade knife will 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 do the job. All right. Right now, we're just squishing to the end. Of our horn cap. And you want to create be at the same level perpendicular with your horn cap angle. And I've got a, a weak spot ever so slightly right here in that leather. So this is where you start to read where those problem areas are gonna be 
And you're gonna do that throughout the entire construction of your saddle. You just start to be aware of the soft spots of each piece and the leather you're using um, until you get a hang of how every how it all works out, right? Now at this point, you could create a line where that stitch is going to be and recess your horn, the filler piece, um, you know, to tighten everything up. And we're gonna do j that, and but just a little bit. We're not gonna really recess this piece, okay? You just want a, a, a depression that's ever so slight. Um, So we know that the center of our horn is at the center of the line. And the thickness of our piece is going to help us out. So you want When you're finding the line for the, that you're gonna tickle, you're gonna tickle the depression for your horn piece, right? You're finding the center of the cap. This is gonna change ever so slightly because of the leathers, uh, the leather thickness is gonna change where that dimension goes. Now it's gonna, not gonna change it drastically, but you don't want to make that line exactly your horn size. You want just a little bump beyond that so that it can tighten around your horn cap, all right? You need an, a place for the, the stitch to go. So I'm just making a slight depression, running it along that line that we just created. Now again, you don't want to be so aggressive with your hand or your palm or what you're using to gauge because you'll change the angle of the leather if you're pushing too hard. And again, we're just making a depression. Okay, so with each step, you want to make sure this is all nice and flat, okay? Flat to the cap that, that you're using. Um, all right, so our next piece, our next step, okay, we want to cut out our back Lot for our horn piece. All right, so we're going to cut here and we're going to cut here these two areas and we're going to slightly pull that up. But we want the top of this as we cut it off to, to match the top length of the bottom part of the filler so that it all tucks in nicely and this ends up being a nice shelf and a wall. Okay. And I'm just doing a nice pull upwards. Okay. So there we are. And we're going to gauge our cut, again, based on the thickness of our leather and where we want it to fall. So I'm running my blade under, under the layer that is our filler layer. And I'm gonna run it across roughly the same manner. Come on. Yep. 
got a little tag. Be careful. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. My head's not in the way. <laughs> so it looks roughly like that when it's roughed in. You can tap this in. Okay. Now, if you claw hammers, I like to use it, but the only reason I'm going to use the claw, the only point I use the claw is to push in areas like this where they're just points. I hardly ever use the claw to try to dig anything out because you're going to this head is going to screw up anything that you, you're working on, all right? Now, at this point, if you guys are real sticklers about having a very circular horn, um, you can come in and cut the excess off. You can see we've just got a little bit shy of an eighth of an inch where our, our our stitch line, our stitch recess is going to be. We just got a little bit of material there. I'm not too concerned with it because most of the time when this flap comes up and over, we're still gonna be working this edge and it's going to blend in once we get everything finished. So if you want to cut it, you can, but it's not necessary at this point because the next step is going to help us resolve that issue, all right? So this, we're going to create a tab out of this excess piece. So we have a circle piece. We have enough that's beyond, uh, more than the two inches that is our, our tab relief, right? So we want enough there. If you guys are cutting your horns out, our horn pieces, when you're doing your layout, you want enough here for that tab. And we'll mark it, we'll trace this part out here. Uh, underneath because this is our we're gonna have a rough out top um, So we're gonna trace everything on this side and we're gonna mark everything and we're going to Skive down on this side and keep everything on the top side because that's this is the nice grain side that we want I mean not the grain side, but this is the nice rough out side that we want. Okay So if it helps, drawing the line, we're going to use the line that we have on our filler, right? We're going to line up this back side with our edge here, okay? So we have enough to stitch on the back side. All right, it looks like everything's lining up pretty nicely. So take a pen or a tracer or a pencil and we're going to use it to trace our pattern underneath, okay? We're going to go through the handhold. Okay. So there we are. And we're going to make just a nice tab pattern, either you can have it squared off or tapered in. Now, keep that in mind, whatever you do, if it's squared off, that square point's gonna come forward. If it tapers back, it will come straight down because this is an angled neck on post horns, all right? So whatever you do, if it's a straighter line, it's going to become a more curved line as it goes down the neck. All right, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take a V Groover. the off side, the gap side, all right, so that this tab can fold into this area nicely, all right, and then we're going to taper everything down to a feather edge, or skive everything down to a feather edge. And if you need to, use your ruler, your center line, and you can guide that at where you're going to be ending your tab. Okay, so here's our tab, right? I've cut all the way through where our diagonals are, which is the end of the cap, right? Or the end of the filler. And you can see where I've offset the groover. Now, I've uh, this is a new <laughs> V groover, which I probably should have prepped a little bit more and ran on the Rouger uh, wheel just a little bit and make it smoother. But um, you can see it's starting to groove. now. I'm going to do a combination of skiving with a French edger and, uh, and grooving until I've got about uh, three-fourths of this thickness gone and I'm using the last fourth um, here at the top side and then everything will, will be feathered out, all right? So it'll be nice and thin. All right, so you see here, I've skived it down. I've got a lot worked down on the inside here. Um, make sure your tools, guys, are very sharp because this process, um, you can see, uh, you know, where it's sort of to pick up stuff. So you've gotta be aware of the surface area that you're 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 skiving on, and you know, make sure it's glass and make sure it's clean here. Um, of course, this is a new bench for me, so I've got to get my um, my plastic top on it so I can get you know every my full cutting board. But anyway, um, tool review. So I just got this V Groover from Tandy, and V Groovers and U Groovers are hard to find, and ones that are sharp enough and angled enough in the right areas uh, are even harder to find. Um, so this was supposed to be ready to go. Um, I ended up having to sharpen it a little bit through this process because with this angle and then taking the sleeve off because um, the angle that the sleeve is grooved at, that, that turn, I don't know if you guys can see that it somehow it's just not working with this groover. Um, so as a as a review, probably probably worth the money that I, I paid for it, uh, mostly because I had to do some more work on it. So um, anyway, I'm always going to keep an eye out for V groovers and new groovers. And uh, anyway, so if you guys get the Tandy one. Just sharpen it, even, you know, play around with it a few times and then sharpen it. Um, but it did an all right job for the most part. Okay, anyway, so I've scratched up the area uh, on the grain side and the back side is, you know, it has a few 
metal filings taken off. Some oxalic acid will take that right away, uh, take it off. Anyway, so we're gonna put this guy on, we're gonna glue our tab in, right? Because now this shape should match that shape and that line will match that line and then everything We'll be all right. So we're gonna set glue down on this surface, glue down on their surface, make sure you get your tab back and your tab. All right. So I'm going to line everything up. Hopefully you guys can see this part. Making sure the tabs are lined up on the back side. Making sure I'm lined up with my center line. I'm going to drop everything slowly and push it down. Making sure that your hands are not covered with glue. Putting them on the rough out. And then Blend it down, okay? Now before you start putting your, your uh, horn pliers on here, leather pliers, you wanna get that tab down, okay? Otherwise it'll start to torque on places that you don't want it to. So we're gonna give a little tug and we're gonna tug down and then you're gonna try to pull to the outside. So we're tugging all right, and then pull towards our sides and then bring it down, okay? Smooth everything out. All right. And you've got excess and it's puckering where you don't want it to. Come in here either with the tip of your, oh, I'm sweating too much. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, with your bone folder or a uh, claw at the end of your claw hammer. All right. And then we're going to put a single nail on either side of those tabs to make sure that that doesn't pull up. And again, um, either half inch or five eighths nails would be fine. Okay. 
So we're going to find center again. Where's our... Right? And if you need to try to find it, what you're doing is lining it up on that line that we created on the bottom side. So now we're, even though that stitch line may have grown um, where the, the area of the horn cap is, right? Again, we want just to outside of that so that it'll pinch the leather that we've now put on inside the, the, those gaps, but it'll be very tight, all right? We're not gonna go any more outside of that line it's just gonna be very tight, just gonna run alongside that gap, but it's gonna tighten everything in because we're allowing it to fill with the material. And I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more. Check my front as well, okay? So we're doing pretty good. I'm going to make my impression. This is gonna be the inside of the stitch line. And I'm going to tickle this line with the bone folder. Okay. And I'm gonna keep that spot, the memory of that spot. running on the outside of that line. Okay. We're gonna cut our excess off. So we can get our leather pliers in there. So my top cap piece may be a little bit more thick than I would really like. But it's not too big of an issue. Okay. Now with your leather pliers, you'll have an angled side and a straight side. For this one, we'll have the straight side on the top. All right. And we're just gonna do a first squeeze. And every time we move, we're just making a half step and we're not going any further than the line we've just tickled. Okay, and if you need to double check, make sure, yeah, we're running fairly parallel underneath. Okay, and then back the other way. And we're just doing a slight impression, we'll get more hand pressure as we do our next pass, but we just want to tighten everything up, okay? We want to make sure that we are still running that line, you know, okay? 
So now I'm going to continue to squeeze and I'm going to run just on top of that tickled line. And if you're too far away from your horn cap, it's going to tell you now. Because if you haven't gotten to the horn cap, as you squeeze the leather down, you're either going to be way over your tickled line, we're just on top of it. All right. Not too bad. Okay. So on the inside of that line, I'm going to go back to our dividers, okay, we haven't changed that distance, we're just going to run around again, and we should now be in the center of that line that we just created, okay, and if you need to tickle it one more time, do it one more time, okay. second pass I usually try to and this is where you're gonna really make that indentation okay I'm gonna do this one more time we're going to make our stitch mark now on that line but we, at this point we also make our cut line now you want to you don't want to do too much a quarter of an inch should be enough for you guys now you can make it more than that but then Whatever's, whatever's outside of that is going to spread out over time, right? So it's gonna remove from the denser part, the more tight part, um, away from what, we've, what we pack in or tighten with the stitch. So you want everything at this point to be nice and tight, even your edge. So we're gonna make our cut line somewhere between 3 16 and a quarter of an inch. Okay. And every time you do a step like this, especially now, you want to go back and make sure you haven't changed your levels. All right. Everything should be fairly tight right now and hard and harder as it start, keeps casing. All right. So it shouldn't be moving too much on you. All right, we're gonna get our stitch marker. And I like to, to do one continuous roll and walk around. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do that right now because uh, the camera's in my way. But where this starts, okay, where you're, you're not going to make that first, that first point a stitch, okay? But, well, you're gonna start there. 
and I'm using a number five stitch marker and I'm also low blood sugar at the moment so it's going to look like I'm shaking but uh, you just want to make one nice pass over your stitch line because at this point if you had a smooth out horn these feet do not rub out if you get off of this line. Now, it just so happened that I ended a stitch right at that same point at that edge back over here. Which is, the fives are nice. Um, the fives are also uh, approximately what the, the stitch I'm using with everything else. So whatever you guys are doing on your skirts, on your rear rigging, the billets, whatever stitch length you're using, you want to try to match up that stitch length with uh, the stitch here on your horn as well as the stitch on your cannon binding, okay? All right, so we're gonna allow this to case up just a little bit uh, more and um, then it'll be ready for the stitching alls. But there we go. One more pass and look at our level, see if it's nice and straight, it's not wobbling all over the place. We will again take a look at this once we've cut our, our outer, our actual. So it's aesthetically pleasing once it becomes a saddle, all right? So this is Heath House with Chicago Stockyard Saddle Tree saying yes you can with these trees.